video number two in this uh, baseline uh, sound design series. Um, now today's baseline um, or bass sound in fact um, we're going to create a uh, again a very very simple one um, but we're going to combine two synthesizers to give the bass a starting sound and an ending sound and then hopefully we're going to be able to uh, assign um, the relationship between the start and the end sound to something we can actually tweak to give it a, a really evolving feeling. Um, again we're going to we're going to be using very basic sounds here but it's all it's all about how we combine them together over a very short period of time to create something unique. Um, so to start off with I'm, I've just um, I've just put in some very very simple um, percussion here um, so let's have a quick listen to that. So just to kick in a snare, now this, this is just to, um, to give us a, 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 something to work the baseline around. Now this will be included in the Ableton Live Pack when you download it. I've just put it here because it's easier to put notes in and stuff with this type of sound. So I've created a, um, a MIDI track over here and I've already called it Baseline. So I've called that Baseline. Excellent. And what we're going to use, as always, is we're going to use an operator. So I'm going to drag the operator down into the device area down here. And now we have our synthesizer, which we can start putting in notes. So let's insert a MIDI clip. I'm going to make it two bars long. Command Shift M. Here's our MIDI clip, and we'll open that up, and now we can put in some notes. Stretch this up a bit so you um, can see what I'm doing. And again, I'm going to work in G. Let's put a note here. I'm just going to put in notes like this. Very cool, and let's just drag this MIDI clip across. So now, as... Um, you probably know from the first video, we've just got one oscillator working here, and it's a simple sine wave. So you can just hear that nice pure sine wave. There's the shape there, very pure sound, nothing harsh on it. Now for this one, we're going to change this wave shape. Let's change it to something a bit more harsh. Um, I'm going to use a square here. Squares are very, very grunty. Squares and saws are good for your grunty bass lines. Um, saws are a little bit more nice, I guess. Whereas squares have that kind of slightly... I don't know, uh, evil sound. Now that's really, really, really loud. Very, very, very high. We've got no filter over it, so um, all the frequencies are coming through and it's blasting us with this, this square shape here, which you can see here. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to turn the filter on over in this section here, over on the um, operator synthesizer. We're going to turn the filter on, set to a low pass filter, 12 decibels, and we can move the frequency around to cut it off. Now like the other tutorial videos, we're going to automate this frequency. We can move it up and down with the mouse if we want, but we're actually going to use the envelope, which if we look over here, here's the envelope. We're going to use this to automate the frequency of the cutoff filter for us, and this is going to apply every time a new note is hit. So for example, um, this part here, which is the attack, you see if I move the attack here, we can move that line. Also if we click and drag here, we can move it like that. This defines how much the filter is going to open up. So let's have a listen to how this sounds with a bit of attack on it. Bring it up a little bit. Bring this back a bit. And we have to turn the envelope amount up here. This is what I forgot. The envelope amount, this is the percentage of how much this affects each individual note. So I'm going to turn this up. Let's turn it up to 100% so we can hear it quite drastically. So you can hear that attack is so short. 0.92 milliseconds, very short. We can't hear it. So let's drag this out while we're playing it and see how that sounds. Very cool. Now that, that's kind of sounding how I want. I'm going to bring the frequency right down, the initial frequency, so that that note actually starts very, very cut off. And I'm just going to move this attack level here um, until it sounds um, nice and in, sh in time um, with the drums. Now this is something you're going to have to do by ear. Um, and depending on your BPM, what it's set up up here. For example, if I play it here. Very cool, but if I bring the BPM down to, let's say, 90, we could bring it out. So it's different depending on your BPM. I'm gonna stick with 140 for now. So let's move that back and bring this back. Now, one great thing about operator and the envelopes in operator is if we click on this little blue dot here, we can actually define a curve. So instead of going straight up, we can actually bring this down and it'll kind of, uh, it'll give us a curve. So again, this is, you can think of this as your filter opening up like this. And if you have a bit of a curve, it, it sounds a bit nicer to me anyway. Let's, let's listen to that. Very cool. 
Very cool. I'm going to open this up and let's just take out every fourth note here just so we can. Um, it's a bit too intense at the moment. Very, very cool. I like that. So I'm just going to keep that there for now. Um, and this is this is going to be the tail end of our tune uh, of our bass sound because um, it starts off close and it opens up over time. So that's going to be the end tail part of our bass line. Um, I'm just going to um, right click on this and group it. If you watch the first video, you know if you right click on an operating click group, it turns it into an instrument rack for us. Now, of course, an instrument rack is a, uh, a virtual rack where you can actually put multiple synthesizers and kind of layer everything up, if you like, these things called chains. So it's given us this single chain here. It's taken it from this operator and it's put it into a chain for us. So we can call this uh, base end. And now we can drag in another operator underneath that and we could call this base start. So now we have two bass sounds playing. We've got this one and we've got base start, which will just be a pure sine wave which is the default of the operator. So let's work on this bass start. So the bass end, because we've got this cutoff filter opening up, that's going to be the end tail of the sound. Let's work on the start here. So I'm going to do exactly the opposite. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to take the sine wave, we're going to turn it into a square wave, just like that. We're going to turn the filter on like before and bring it down. And we'll give it some envelope. Put it right up the top. Now, of course, because the envelope isn't like this, because we don't have any attack, it's not going to go open up, it's not going to open up the filter. We're going to have it open for right from the start, but we want it to quickly close as soon as the note plays. So, by default, this has a 600 millisecond delay, so it's going to take 600 milliseconds to close this filter from the top frequency down to that frequency, and it's going to do it at this curve here. So let's have a quick listen. Not bad. Let's make the decay a bit shorter, so we've got a bit more of a stab. And let's bring the frequency right down. Very cool. Now if we put these two together, just like that. Um, now one uh, fun thing to do here is to, it's, it's nice to have a little bit of separation of these two, and we will work a little bit more on that um, in a minute, but the easiest way to do this, and I really like this, is to pick one of them and give it some spread over here in the pitch envelope. This just creates one of the sounds, it gives it a bit of a spatial stereo sound to it, so let's do that. Excellent. Now at this stage I'm going to open up the MIDI clip and I'm going to change some of these notes around. Um, because it's a bit too intense at the moment. Actually, let's bring the BPM down a bit. Maybe one. 125 is good. And of course, because we've changed that BPM, we need to go back into this base end, over to the filter envelope, and change this a little bit. Very good. Now let's open this up and let's change some of these notes. I'm going to put a note here, drag it out a bit. Excellent. I'm just going to drag these notes a bit shorter so they have a, a, a shorter length that should create a nicer effect. with how that's sounding at the moment as far as the bass line goes. Um, actually what I might do is I'm because I've got a, a two bar loop here and I've dragged this out, this loop out across here so it's actually um, four bars long, I'm actually going to click on this loop and I'm going to push command J or you can right click and choose consolidate. Now what this actually does is it combines these two MIDI clips into one whole four bar loop for us. So it's, it's, it's duplicated this up for us on the piano roll, which is great because it means that we can add a little bit more phrasing in if we want. So for instance, at the end of this four bar phrase, it would be nice to have a little bit more variation. So I'm just gonna play that and have a listen. So over here, let's just add in a few more notes and, and, and change it a wee bit. So let's, I'm just gonna put this there. I'm gonna command D and duplicate it here. We'll get rid of these and um, 
down here. Again, this is trial and error stuff, so you can um, you can do do this however you want because we're trying to work on the sound, but it's nice to have a good melody while we're doing it or a good bassline melody. Very cool. Let's put one more here. I'm just going to hold down shift and push up on this note to make an octave higher, see how that sounds, might be a bit too intense. Very, very cool. Um, now, obviously, this is uh, the kick and the snare are, are kind of getting drained out now because this is such a prominent sound. So what I'm going to do quickly is um, I'm going to add in a, uh, a compressor after the bass sound. I'm going to turn on the side chaining. Remember this arrow here gives us the side chain ability. And of course, side chaining means you're taking the input from some source and uh, and and doing something with it. In this case, we're going to side chain the bass line. So it's going to bring the th it's going to bring the um, kick the compressor in. So every time the kick plays, the bass line is going to get out of the way. So we do this by turning on the side chain, selecting our audio from. We want the audio to come from the kick. If we look on the over here. Can see this level going up here. If we bring the threshold down, this means that everything over here in this instrument rack is going to get out of the way whenever the kick plays. And that's everything, including the start and the end. And that's because we've put the compressor after the instrument rack. If we put the compressor after one of the effects over here, it's only going to apply to that one. So at the moment, it's only going to apply to the bass end, but we want this after the effect rack. So everything works across from left to right. So let's have a listen to how this sounds as we bring the threshold down. That's pretty cool. I'm going to add another compressor here, and I'm going to do exactly the same thing. Open the arrow, turn on the side chaining, go to audio from, and select snare instead. So now it's going to get out of the way of the snare as well. Now that could be quite cool. Very, very, very cool. So. That's just um, bringing the snare and the kick out without really lowering the volume of the bass line. We're just kind of getting it out of the way when that happens. Now that's all good. Now I'm going to introduce um, a bit of, uh, I guess you could say, feeling to it. Now I'm going to touch on something which I haven't touched on before. And this is this part down here, which is called the groove pool. Now this is a new addition to Ableton 8. This is, a, this, is a, this is an area where you can load in grooves, or I guess kind of kind of little patterns of, of, of grooviness. Um, for instance, if you've got a drummer playing, you know, a drum loops that say, you know, a funky drummer or something like that, and, you know, he's got a real groove on, that kind of swing shuffle thing, um, you can actually load that, just that feeling, that groove in here, and then you can apply it to something else. So that particular type of shuffle or that particular type of feeling can be applied to any clip, um, whether it be audio or MIDI in Ableton. It's actually quite clever. Uh, if you drop it onto an audio track, analyzes the audio track, finds all the beats, and then actually changes the beats. It warps them, um, kind of warps warps them for you, so so you get that kind of groove. Now, I'm going to go into the Ableton library here. Well, this is the library which is set up on my computer, and there's actually a folder called Grooves. Now, these are a whole bunch of grooves that um, Ableton have already provided um, for us to use. Now, I'm just going to use a, a simple groove here. I'm going to go into the Swing folder. And we can see these are all our grooves here. Now you can see we've got um, swing 8 beats and swing 16 beats and swing 32 beats. We're going to use, I'm going to try using a swing 16 beat here. And this um, last number is kind of the intensity of the swing. Um, so I'm going to try something around the 65, 75 area. And I'm going to drag this down into our groove pool. Now if we do that, you see we've got this new groove. It's sitting here. It's ready to be used. It's ready to be applied to anything like this. But you see it's not currently applied to anything. So therefore it is grayed out. So grayed out means it's not currently in, in use, it's not currently active. Now the way we apply this is we simply grab it and we drag it over one of our clips. So if I click this and drag it over here and I've dropped it, you see how now this is no longer grayed out. 
and this particular swing, this particular groove, is now applied to this bass line. One interesting thing quickly we can do is if I create a new MIDI track and just drag that groove into the MIDI track, it actually shows us what the groove is. So it's given us a little MIDI clip here. So let's open it up and have a look. I'm just going to scroll around and find the beats. Where are we? There we go. So that is how the groove is currently set out. Let's zoom in and have a look. You can see how... Turn the narrow. You can see how some of these notes are offset. Now the second notes are offset by quite a large amount. Um, and what this does is when we drag this groove, again, which is this pattern over here, it's going to take that pattern and apply it to these notes. Now these notes don't, sh don't actually um, show us, they don't actually offset like this pattern, but it, it does it for us in the back end. And of course, if we do actually want to apply that groove, if we're happy with it and we do want these notes to change into that groove, now we can choose commit here. So if we click on commit, watch these notes. See how they move? See how every 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 kind of second note moves across a little bit? So that's if we click commit, but we don't want to do that for now because we want to play around with the groove before we actually do that. So I've just command Z that. I've just undone that. I'm going to get rid of this MIDI track. We don't need that. It was just to show you what the groove actually looks like. So let's have a listen to this groove now. Can you hear how that kind of changes it? It gives it a bit of a swing. Um, actually, just to give you a bit an idea of that, let's, um, I've put in a hi-hats track here and I've already loaded some samples up for us. Now I'm just going to put in a MIDI clip here. I'm going to need to quickly chuck in some of these hi-hats for us. Uh, very, very quickly. Very sloppy. So let's have a listen to that hi-hat loop. We've made them a bit too long, so I'm just selecting all and then I'm going to drag them shorter and Command D. So now we, oops, is incorrect, sorry. I'm just going to click on these, hold down the option key and drag them across. So now we have, so that's very straight, that's no groove. Very computer sounding. But if I drop the swing onto it, that's to give you an idea. Um, just quickly, I'm going to delete all these ones here, just so we have four. And I'm going to change the velocity of these hi-hats as well. That gives it an even more human feeling. It kind of each, each note has a little bit of a, a different um, volume. And now I can select that and duplicate it across. We can just change a few of these just to give it a bit more of a feeling to it. I don't really want to work on the um, percussion too much, but this is just to give you an idea. Um, and just at the end, one thing I like to do, make that show up shorter, duplicate it. And we'll just copy these across, hold down the option key, copy them across, and just make a little roll. Um, if we select all the notes here, whoops, if we select all the notes, hold down the command key, and draw down here on the velocity part, it'll actually snap all those to the to the curve that we defined. So we can actually go like this, or like this. I want these to go up. These are fast little hi-hat notes, and that's just going to mean they're going to have a little bit of a roll. So let's have a listen. And just because I'm a perfectionist, I'm just going to bring a couple of these notes up like this. This is just the second sample that I have here. Uh, have a listen. Very, 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 very cool. Now, let's go back into this baseline. Sorry, I got a bit carried away in the percussion. So I'm going to go into this bass line here, and again I'm going to solo the start part, the bass start part. I'm going to muck around with this sound a little bit. Let's make it a little bit more punchy, maybe a bit more short. So I'm going to bring this filter down, frequency down a bit more. So Let's go into the filter envelope. Let's even bring the decay down a bit lot shorter. Now one fun thing to do is if we go into this um, second oscillator here, the oscillator B, um, we can actually um, modulate the uh, FM modulate this oscillator here. Um, now we do this, uh, we, I'm just going to use a sine wave and just keep it on all these settings here, I don't want to get into FM synthesis now, but if we go over to the algorithm um, and we look at this, this is how the um, these uh, operators or oscillators currently um, affect each other. So if we look here, you can see the green one affects the yellow one, which is B affects A. So basically, as we bring the level of this waveform up, it's not actually going to play a sine wave out, it's actually going to modulate this one. And this is just, just to give it a bit more of a grunt on the, um, on the start. So I'm just going to bring this up and have a listen. Let's 
go over to the filter and open it up a bit, see how that sounds. I quite like that. Bring the um, the uh, de decay back down a bit. And bring the bass, bring the bass end in. So um, I'm going to slow this down even a bit more. Very cool. <coughs> now, let's try something a little bit interesting now. I'm going to open up the macro area of the instrument rack. Now these macros are eight individual knobs which we can assign anything inside these two chains to. Anything which is inside your instrument rack, any parameter can be assigned, or nearly every parameter can be assigned to one of these macro knobs. And you can do multiple things to multiple macro knobs. So say if you wanted to change the velocity and the cutoff filter at once, we could have a knob to do that. Um, but for this one, now this is the this is the, the, the interesting part which I want to try. And I haven't actually done this before, so I thought I'd just try and wing this part, but I have a feeling it's going to be a cool idea. Is, um, this decay time of the start, so let's listen to here. I want it to be assigned to that decay time, and I also want it to be assigned to the decay time of the bass end. Oh, sorry, the attack time of the bass end. So that means we could move a knob and we could actually change the attack time of one and the decay time of the other one. I think this could be a cool knob to play with. So let's try that. So I'm going to go into the map mode up here and you'll see that these uh, macros now have a map knob. So if I go into these parameters in both of these instruments here, so base start for example we wanted the decay, so I'm going to click on the decay, you'll see how all these maps um, become ungrade and they now allow us to assign um, this param parameter which we have to that knob. So I'm going to click map, boom, done. And now if we go into the base end and we go to the attack, I'm going to map it to the same knob. Again, we can map two things to the same knob. So I've mapped that in there. Now that's all good, but the problem here is if we take it out of map mode and we move this, see how it goes really, really, really drastically. It goes up to 20 seconds, and if we bring it down, it goes down to zero. Again, in the base start, this will go all the way up to 60 seconds and back down. That's way too much. Because we're working on quite short times here, we want to actually make it so zero is, is, is very, very, you know, our starting point. But 127 is, is a little bit further than that. So we do this by going back into map mode and clicking on the little arrow up here in the top left. Um, now you might be familiar with this if you've mapped MIDI stuff um, or key stuff to Ableton. Um, macros have their own little macro mappings area here. And this is great because we can define the range of um, those two parameters that we've assigned. See here we've got um, the, uh, the, um, the two things here. We've got the filter envelope attack and the filter envelope decay. Um, so, and you see here base end, base start, but we can actually define how much of these we want. So I'm just going to stretch this out. Um, what's this one say? Attack time. So the attack time, let's bring the attack time right down. Let's bring it up to, we're going to have to play around a bit here. Let's bring it up to, let's say 300 milliseconds. And we want the decay time to be a lot shorter as well. So let's bring this down. To here. Now this probably isn't going to work at the start, but let's let's play this and move the macro. So I'll go back into macro mode so we can have a listen. We have to um, unsolder the base start part, of course. Now what I've done wrong here is I've got these um, set to do pretty much. Um, contradicting things. So what I really should have done is one of these needs to be high, so for example here 410 milliseconds and this needs to be at zero. So that means when this one is at zero, when the attack time is at zero, then um, the uh, decay time of the start is actually um, quite long and vice versa. When the decay time is at uh, one millisecond, the, um, the, the uh, attack of the other one is going to be quite long and open. So let's have a listen to see how that sounds. So 
So I've opened this macro knob up as far as it can be, which means that the max time is going to be 364. This is way too short, so let's just move this up until we can find the, um, the nice point for this to be at its most uh, extreme value. Not bad, let's bring it down and have a listen to how that sounds. Interesting, okay, now let's move this around. Not bad, I'm going to bring the minimum of the uh, attack time up a bit. I'm quite happy with that, let's have a listen. Now one thing I'm going to do here, now I'm noticing that these uh, these two things are conflicting. Um, so the, uh, the bass start and the bass end, they're going to be playing low frequencies at the same time, which is not something we want. So I'm going to add a compressor after the bass end chain in the instrument rack. So let's take a compressor, let's load it in here, we're going to turn side chaining on, we're going to take the audio from, where are we, bass lines, uh, we're going to take this from, so if we ch ch check bass lines, so it's, we've told it to take the audio from bass lines, which is just tracked here, and then we've got a, another drop down menu where we can pick bass start pre-effects, so that means that <laughs> This compressor is now taking the sidechain input from this bass start. So the compressor is on the bass end, it's going to take the sidechain from bass start. Now if we bring the threshold down here, that, oh, not on that one, on bass end. If we bring the threshold down here, that means that whenever the bass start is playing, it's actually going to sidechain compress the bass end, which means there won't be any conflicting stuff, hopefully. <laughs> going to bring everything down an octave to see how that sounds. It's going to open up this MIDI clip, select all, shift, down. Yeah, that's the shit. Alright, so again, I just opened up that MIDI clip, I just selected all the notes, and I push, hold down, shift, and I push down. Um, that just brings everything down an octave. You hear it's much more fat down there. It's getting a bit annoying up the high end. So let's just have a quick look at that um, side chaining that I did there because that could have been slightly confusing. So again, here's my bass end, I'm going to solo that. And I've put this compressor over it with the audio from the bass start. So that means every time the bass start plays or is playing a sound, this bass end is actually going to get out of the way. Um, and that's so we don't have any conflicting low sub frequencies which um, can make things sound really, really muddy and horrible. So if we go over to the bass end and look at that compressor. We can see this level is actually the bass start happening. If I turn on this little headphone symbol here, we can actually um, have a quick listen to what's currently affecting the compressor. So with the headphone on, it's giving us a preview of what's affecting this compressor. If we turn it off, this is the actual end result. Very cool, now let's put them both on. Let's move our macro knob around.
very cool. Now this base end, um, it's a little bit quiet, so what I might do is I'm going to put in an EQ8 after the, the uh, oh, where are we, excuse me, that was a mistake, Command Z. Let's go back to base end, here's our compressor, yeah, open it up, here's our operator, here's our compressor, and let's put the EQ8 after there, and I'm going to bring the, um, the higher frequencies of that um, base end up. Macro down a bit. Not bad. Let's um put a little bit of automation just after that. Um, I'm going to put an auto filter after the CQ8, and I'm going to turn it into a um, a notch filter. Now a notch filter subtracts a small notch of frequencies from the original. So uh, remember, low pass let through these frequencies, the low frequencies, high pass let through the high frequencies, band pass let through a band of frequencies. So that's in this little hilly peak. If we're working with a notch, it's actually subtracting a little notch, a little band, a little hill of frequencies. Now this is, I, these are usually these are used to subtract frequencies, annoying frequencies. I like to use them and automate them just to give um, a sound, especially the high end of a bass line like we're currently doing, a little bit of a, a little bit of movement. And we do this by turning on the LFO. So the LFO, the low frequency oscillator, it's going to move slowly and it's going to kind of move this frequency around for us to give it a bit more of an evolving feeling. So if we bring the amount up, this is how much of the LFO if I was applied, the rate is how fast it's going. I'm going to bring this down quite slow, and the phasing I'm going to turn off completely. Phasing just kind of makes it go from left to right. We don't want that because we're working in a baseline. So I've turned that down. Let's have a quick listen to see how that sounds. Let's bring the amount up a lot more. I'm going to solo the bass end. Not bad, it could do with a little bit more of a something grungy on it, so I'm going to put a flanger after it as well. <laughs> let's have a listen to that. Way too much feedback, so let's bring the feedback of the flanger down. Turn the phasing off again, it's got an LFO as well, just like the auto filter. Let's bring the bass start back in. I might bring the uh, threshold up on the compressor, which is side chaining from the uh, start sound. But change the EQ a bit. Sounding not mad. I'm just going to back, go back to this macro. I wasn't actually quite happy with that ha how that sounded. In fact, I'm going to go into map mode, and on the macro, I'm going to remove the um, base start part. So I'm going to delete this or unmap it. So I've clicked on it, and I'm going to delete it. So now the only thing that this macro is mapped to is the uh, end um, duration of the base end. Let's have a listen. And I'm going to go back into map mode and I'm going to change this. I'm going to bring this knob down to its minimum value and then I'm going to play with the minimum to find another sweet spot. Very cool. And let's bring it up to the top and change the max value. Now if we change this, this is assigned to how long it takes to do that sweep. Let's bring the bass back in. Very, very cool. Now what's something we do with this bass start? I'd like to automate this a little bit so that each note isn't just such a stab sound. 
Now one of the cool things we could play with here would be obviously the frequency of the filter. But more fun would probably be the decay time. Now that, remember that's what we had to the map to the macro knob before, but it didn't really work out. So we're going to um, try and automate this some other how, some way else. So let's let's move the decay just to make sure that's what we want to change. Pretty cool. Now one thing we could do here is we could use the LFO of this operator to do that. So if we go over to the LFO, turn it on, and we've got to turn off these first. This is uh, the, the destination A. So the LFO has two places it can be sent to. Um, at the moment destination A is set to the um, level, uh, uh, sorry, the pitch of A, B, C, and D. We don't want that because then it'll, it'll change the, the, the pitch of our, of our notes. So we've turned that all off so there's nothing happening on destination A. But if we go down to destination B and click on this little arrow, we can actually pick somewhere else for it to go. And let's have a look and see what we've got. Um, Filter envelope amount. Now that's that. That could be a good one. So I'm going to select filter envelope amount again. If we go to the filter and look at the envelope, here's the amount here. Um, so this now this LFO, the slow um, oscillating kind of set of information, is actually going to change the amount of that envelope over time. Now one thing we need to remember is to turn off this little R here. This little R means retrigger. That means that each time a new note is played, it will um, it will start the the um, the LFO again. We don't want that here because we want this to be a slow evolving sound. So I'm going to turn that off. Let's have a quick listen to see how this sounds. Nothing much at the moment. Now if we bring the amount of the LFO up, this is how much of the LFO is actually going to be applied to the um, destination, which is of course the filter envelope. So let's bring the amount up. So you can kind of hear it um, uh, going away completely and coming back at a certain rate, which is uh, 64 at the moment. Let's bring this uh, let's change this rate. If we go to this L drop down menu, we can change it to sync. That rate now turns into um, a, uh, a, a synced up value rather than a, a number that which we define. It's a, it's a synced up value. So we can choose 16th notes, for example, or quarter notes, half notes. That's a whole bar. Let's try a whole bar. Here, how at the start of the bar, there's no um, envelope on that um, stab sound, and then it slowly comes in. Let's change this um, LFO destination to something else, just to give you an idea. Let's, let's try the filter frequency, this could be quite cool. Not bad, um, let's change the rate to 2 bars instead. Bring the amount down, it's a bit too intense. I'm just going to go for this bass end, there's a bit too much of that flanger there. Where is it? Bring the feedback down. Pretty cool. I might even, just for fun, let's put a reverb after this. Um, flanger to give it a bit of a space. Now what I like to do with the high end of bass is I like to give it a really short size and a really short decay time and not much dry wet. That kind of gives it a bit of a space to it. Yeah that kind of, you know, it's kind of like you're playing it in a small room or you know, it kind of reminds me of you know if you go to a club and you go to a toilet or something and there's windows rattling you know that kind of sound. Let's just turn the flanger off for a sec, see how that sounds without it. Not bad. Let's bring these frequencies down. Just kind of tweaking around, trying to find the right sweet spot now. We could probably actually take this first pole on this EQ8 and turn it into a high pass shelf um, or a low cut so it, um, it actually gets rid of all bass frequencies, but I don't actually think we need it. It sounds like that bass start sound is actually doing all of the work for us. I'm going to get rid of this auto filter, don't need it. 
get rid of the flanger too. I'm just gonna solo the bass end. Hmm, now what can we do here? It's sounding a bit quiet, I want it a bit more powerful, so I'm gonna put a limiter after the um, synthesizer. Remember, we're still working on the bass end and before the compressor, and I'm gonna bring the gain up quite a lot, so that means it's, it's gonna be a lot louder, but of course the compressor is still gonna compress it. <laughs> Very cool. Let's just change some of these notes around. It's getting a bit monotonous now. I'm just going to delete all the notes and bring it back to a bar long. It's not working for us. Bring the loop points down. Again, I'm going to click this and consolidate this whole clip. So I've got a big one, and we're just going to move some of these notes up, just a bit of a variation. Again, I'm just doing this to refresh our ears a wee bit. And then we'll just simply put some notes here. I'm going to make the first note longer and the second one shorter. That usually gives a nice kind of even more of a shuffling effect. So you can do it like this. And make this note the short one. You delete that. Copy this. Holding on the option key and just dragging. Oops. Make it faster. Here we go. I think I'm happy with that. Um, so that's um that's our that's our baseline. As I said, um, the concept was playing with this part, which is the attack time of the end of the bass. We've used two synthesizers: the attack time of the end of the bass and the decay time of the start of the bass. And of course, those are the um, the filter envelopes. Um, so that's that kind of just gives the two synthesizers doing two separate parts of the note. Um, and you can do lots of really fun things with this. And in fact, I mean, you could chain up heaps of different synthesizers if you want. You could have it have all multi different parts. Some synthesizers other than operator actually allow you to add extra points all throughout your envelope. So you could actually add in more points here. So you can have it go up and down and then up and down really quickly and all that kind of stuff. Um, whereas with the operator, um, it doesn't, doesn't allow that kind of thing. But it's quite easy to do in an instrument rack. And I, I prefer doing it this way anyway, because then you can actually change the sound of one particular part. And um, and um, leave the leave the sound like a uh, the original sound intact, which is quite cool for that kind of spatial thing. This whole spread thing, I like that. So there you go. That's the um, second baseline. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, hope you get too sidetracked. And yeah, stay tuned for the next one. Cheers, TomCosm.com.